reality has warped in on itself in some unusual way, and that's mind blowing. I I wouldn't have. I don't. I guess I would have liked the end a little bit more if I had a little bit more of a clue that he was feeling a certain way towards her, um, because I didn't get the sense of that. I felt like he maybe had this maybe very... it's a, a lack of chemistry between between the two, right? I can see that. I, yeah, I can feel that slightly. Yeah, just a little, a little bit. bit for me because I thought it was more of this connection between him and his father. Like he was longing I like to that. have yeah, this. That, like, that subplot was great. Yeah, this like. Um, just closure that, like, he wanted his dad to know, like, yeah, like, I love you and I'm sorry, but, and I like that, that was very, like, I, I felt like, wow, that sucks, like, for him, and I, I did feel bad, but I didn't see that, like, that love story, that, like, feeling towards her, I thought he was focused on finding out if he was dead and if, how his dad was feeling, um, so the fact that the end he does feel this certain way towards her, I don't know if it's because he knows that he's dead or is it, or if it's because he like was feeling like this, but he was just like, he only had those eight minutes each time. So I don't know. It just kind of kept me wondering, like, did he really like her throughout this whole process or does he feel like this because that's like the only option since you're in this train? And also, I don't know if you guys picked up on it, but... He was not just himself. He was also an amalgamation of this other guy's being. So he didn't just well, look, yeah. He didn't just look like him, but he was taking on those thoughts and attributes that came along with being who that person Sean. was. Yeah, Sean or whatever. Yeah, teacher. Yeah, history so, teacher. So he was. Him as a soldier is Coulter Stevens, I believe, is his name, right? Yeah. So that when they project him in there, he can th- he knows who he is, but you can see that he's t- oh, wow. embodied yeah. this other person, who's you know who was planted there uh, in the source code in order to k- figure out these information to prevent something that happens in the future, yeah. like they talk about uh, that they they do that to to prevent something that has that happens later on Mm -hmm. but you know what i loved i thought i didn't have a problem with the end i i do agree with annie about some of the music is like what like that was a little cheesy like if they just would have changed that music maybe the tone would have been better but i i don't have a problem with her uh kind of releasing him into the source code you know Mm -hmm. like into that alternate reality and letting him continue his life through you know rather than just putting him to rest or whatever and giving him another like a lease on life you know what i mean after saving all these people on the train i thought that was really cool and um like the romance or whatever between uh her like you like you said uh who knows whether it's just him might beco- you know slowly becoming more Sean and Sean al- already liked her right yeah. what if he was already in love with her to begin with and she was like hesitant because she does that little like bit where she's like I've been waiting for this amount of time yeah. for you to ask Finally me for he coffee you decided yeah right so there was already I did like that I thought that was cute yeah there's like um all these layers and different ways you can look at this and find new meaning behind it, just like Donnie Darko, mm-hmm. right? And that's why I think that that's so well received uh, critically, and why it's probably got ninety three, because yeah. it's pretty pretty solid. You know what I mean? And that whole like method behind the source code and how they, you know, how it works and it's how it was created and stuff. I really really dug that, and and uh, I feel like it's kind of. Since that film, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I think that that film has sparked kind of a subgenre of that endless loop mm-hmm. in different ways. People trying to do that again yeah. in another way. And uh, a good example of this is there's a, this new horror film. I don't know if you guys, you guys have been, probably been to the movies rather recently. There's this new horror film I was telling uh, James about it uh, the other morning. It's called Happy Death Day, I think mm. it's called. Yeah. Where this chick wakes up and she does like this uh, this same routine and at the end of it, um, she's killed by this guy in a mask and a hoodie. She's like murdered by him mm-hmm. and then she wakes up in the in that same morning and relives that whole day. So it's kind of like she's put into this like 
uh, this loop of reality to solve her own murder. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think that that's totally influenced mm -hmm. by this film. You know what I mean? Also, wasn't there like a Tom Cruise movie that did that? Oh, yeah. Um, that's another an example. Uh, it's called Edge, Edge of Tomorrow. There you go. Uh, or lived I repeat. repeat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. And it's a little bit more war, like war focused and bigger budget, of course. But I feel like those movies were definitely influenced by this one. There's one on uh, Netflix. It's a uh, Netflix original. You were you were talking yeah. to me about it. It's called it, right? uh, like The Ark or something. Mm -hmm. But um it's, it's kind of low budget, low budget, but it's it's a Netflix original and it's the same type of thing a guy wakes up and something happens, he gets shot and then he wakes back up in his bed mm -hmm. and has to, like how you said, with the murder. But he has to, little by little, he finds out more and more of like what's going on, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like it's an endless loop. The same same type of concept. Yeah. Um, one part that I might need like further explanation, um, because I mean this is my first time watching it, but there's a part where she tells him that. Like, he has some sort of control of the capsule because it's in his mind. And in his mind, he's, like, freezing. Like, why was he freezing? Because he's inside of that um, stasis chamber that's keeping him cool to keep his body alive. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, Like, to keep his body from rotting? So it kind of, like, he went from, like, reality into... Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you so much. I, I was like, wait, why is he cold all of a sudden? Like, yeah, where he has, like, on? the ice and mm -hmm. stuff. It's yeah. like his mind was feeling the, the, the actual yeah, yeah, the actual temperature. Okay, got it. That's very cool. I like that. Very cool. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I liked it. I, I do like the, what, Wesley, what you said about, like, him taking on, like, Sean's, like, like almost persona thoughts. like right. yeah that maybe he already did love her i mean if they had several encounters and when she's like you're acting very weird like mm -hmm. i like the new sean like i thought that was very cute because like it's not sean mm -hmm. i mean like but it's his attempt to to try to become that not that person but try to like mesh those like memories so i thought that was cool that um, they had known each other before and that there was some love interest, but I, I guess it wasn't apparent to me that Jake Gyllenhaal had those feelings, but then when you mention it, that Sean did, and Sean, he was still part of Sean, that, that makes total sense. I, I like the fact when, when he first wakes up the first time, he, you know, he's confused, like, I don't know who you are, get away from me, mm -hmm. and as the movie goes on as he keeps on dying and redoing it over and over it's like he, he falls in love with he her he keeps on getting yeah. a little more he's like oh he's like you're real you're a real nice person mm -hmm. and he's like and, and then he gets you more like sentimental and well, some he, type uh, of attachment to her it's funny yeah when he goes back to talk about uh, Veer's character yeah um Goodwin Goodwin mm -hmm. right he he starts fighting for her he wants to put it all on the basically he puts it all on the line for her and to save everybody on the yeah. train even if ultimately it doesn't, he thinks it's not going to work. He's like, you know, one more chance, you know, yeah. He's just like, put me in and shut me off and let me try to do this. And if he had been killed in that last final act, mm -hmm. that would have been a wrap, right? Yeah. He would have died. He would have died. He will die yeah. when he dies in whatever universe he's in, right? And that's what I, I, I love about this film. It's just like, it's a mind fuck, mm -hmm. pretty much. <laughs> when you talk about uh, mind fucks. I was in, in part of it when. Uh, when he's trying to figure out who put the bomb in the bathroom, and mm -hmm. she, he's like, "Who else was in the bathroom? Did you see anyone else go in the bathroom?" And she says, "You, you were in the bathroom." At that at that point in the movie, how I had assumed that he was the bomber, yeah. and he didn't know it because it wasn't you know his mind, uh -huh. and um, probably like for the last the next thirty minutes or so, I'm thinking, "Oh, he's probably the bomber. He, he doesn't know it. he's the bomber." And then at the end, he's going to find out. But, I mean, that was a, a little... At least I caught mm -hmm. on to that. It was yeah, a twist for me. I was like, oh, he's the bomber. Right when they said, you know, she's like... Because well, doesn't he look in his bag? Yeah, and he's like, oh, it's a broken phone. Yeah. And then he, she's like, well, you're in the bathroom. And he's like, I was in the bathroom. And then I was like, oh, shit, he's the bomber. So he was thinking, like, wait, what about the time period before... Yeah, I'm prior to yeah. him going into his into his body or whatever. Oh, that's what yeah. I, I, I got That's cool. Out. I never got that. I never yeah. got that interpretation. Yeah. But yeah. Thanks for sharing that, man. 
I caught that, but I, I thought, I was like, oh, it's gonna be one of these, like, characters that's just sitting there. <laughs> um, like, the college student that, like, hands over the wallet or mm -hmm. something. Um, but I've, I want to talk about the real deal um, in this movie. Did you guys notice that the, the cell phone had Bing as a default browser instead of, or, like, in, like search engine instead of Google? Like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this movie was big. W was it big? I didn't know. that. This That's is kind of weird. Maybe that was a rights thing or something. Yeah. You never know. Because I think they have to pay Google when they use... No, well, yeah. I know right. um, one of my older phones that I had gotten, one of my first, like, smartphones, mm -hmm. uh, Bing was the search engine. Yeah, it was for a while. It was, it was a thing. It was a T-Mobile phone, I don't know, but that's that's when I turned on the internet, that's what the uh, search engine was. Until you had to, like, change you the... Like, go to like, Google. Yeah, yeah, change it, yeah. Anyways. Uh, my next question for you guys um, would be, do you have a favorite scene? Or a favorite part? Uh overall um there's a, a scene where i think they ex they you know the bomb explodes i think it might be like in the f like fifth and sixth time that explodes where he's like going back and not getting anything done you know how there's a couple of t tries that he's just like going back and being ex unsuccessful but um the character of christina's face like warps all weird oh like, when the yeah. fire comes yeah it's like, i was like that's so freaking scary um i thought that was cool because yeah they really pushed the envelope with being pg-13 some of the, the death stuff is really cool mm -hmm. in this and and it's very done like kind of tastefully too or yeah. whatever for the rating but it works i have no problem with this uh being pg-13 at all which is proof i mean you can do I, i've never said like it has to be r to be a good movie you can do pg-13 movies but sometimes a premise calls for it, it to, be to be r, r yeah. you know what i mean uh, favorite part, James? Um, it was a scene when he, uh, he's talking to, what's the, the black guy's name? I don't know his name. The doctor, or the guy who's in charge. Dr. Basically. Or something like that. Or did you, yeah. He, he, he created source code. Yeah, the guy who created source code. Yeah. And he's, um, he's like, I called you, I called you, I, le I left a message or whatever, and he's, and he's like, well, that wasn't me, and, and he's like, well, man, maybe I should send you, like, a fucking pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you get the message, and then, that that part to me was pretty funny. But yeah, that kind of like witty. Yeah, uh, those jokes that Gyllenhaal always seems to do, like right? the little faces he was making when yeah. he finds the bomb. Like I was like, are you trying to be funny, or is this just like a little Jake Gyllenhaal? I feel like face? that's just Jake. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, like he just does that. I like the, the when he um, when he unplugs the last uh, the second detonator. Mm -hmm. He unplugs it and he like looks at the the, the bomb and he's like what? <laughs> and then like he closes yeah. it back up and leaves. He's like I got you. Yeah. Totally him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that's like the character. It's, yeah. it's like the actor. Improv. Yeah. Right. What Dennis? Uh, I think best scene would have had to have been when he reconciles with his father. Um, oh yeah. Because he never got to do that as an actual person. I mean, you know, this you find out later on. In, that's touching that for it sure. Does yeah. Go through, yeah. But, so many people who can probably relate to things like that, not being able to say their final piece, uh, it was, it was touching for sure. I dig that. Um, shit. What about you? <sighs> Wes? My, uh, my favorite scene. That's a hard one. Um, oh, I really like that, uh, that, even though it's very grim and he's unsuccessful, I love when he jumps out of the train while it's moving mm -hmm. to get to the guy in the van oh, yeah. and the explosives or whatever and that whole interaction when he's like, I fucking got you, right? Yeah. <laughs> and because even though he's not successful, uh, you know it's going to be okay because he'll, he'll be able to go back and, and, and fix Try it. Again. But I love that interaction where you get to meet the bomber and what and his reason for what he's doing was very crazy and I get I feel like they give you a little depth into into that yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it was very cool. Um, I have one more question and then we'll jump in into the Swan facts. Okay. All right. So this is probably uh, a ballsy one. But uh, do you guys think that this film is better than Donnie Darko? And if so, why? Or if not, why? 
Um, I, I don't. Um, I, I like Donnie Darko, and I don't want to just, like, see all these characters, the main characters die or anything, but I feel